Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Mesa Troll Tips and Tricks. If this is your first time here, my name is Phil and I teach people how to set up and run a Mazak CNC lathe while programming it with Mesa Troll. If you want to see more of this type of content, be sure to click that subscribe button and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the manual G-code process inside of Mesa Troll to drill a hole using an insert drill. On this older machine, it will not let you machine any features smaller than your specified drill diameter if using a drilling process. The computer thinks there is no longer any material to machine out. To get around that issue, I will usually drill the part using the manual process or otherwise known as MNP. That way the machine will still allow me to machine the bottom face of the drilled pocket down to X0 if needed. All right, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is install the drill into the machine, which I've already done, and also set the tool. This tool is tool number seven. I've described it as a boring bar, a general in, with a 95 degree and an 80 degree insert. And it's a one inch 125 drill. And I told it it had a 30 thou radius, which doesn't really matter for the MNP process. And then run it in the MO3 direction, and it's a right hand tool. And then what I also did is I probed it as a boring bar, not as a drill. So I do not want this X0 to be the center of the drill. I want it probed as a boring bar, and I'll show you why in a minute. So we're going to modify this part, uh, sample workpiece number one. So this is sample workpiece number one, figure check, scale, zoom it in a little bit. So there's the OD of it, and what we want to do is we want to punch a hole in here, uh, 1 inch 130. So here's how to do that. So we'll go back to program, delete the end process, so use the right button, erase, input, down arrow, and then say shape end. So what we're going to do is push the three arrows, go to the manual program, and what it's asking us, exchange point of tool, yes for one, no for zero. And I want to go back to the tool change point before I use this tool. So put a one in here, and that sends it to the tool change position. Gear number, this is very important. Because we're using a manual process, the machine will not automatically calculate the correct gear for you. So you must put in gear number one on this machine, even though it does not have a transmission. It, it's a single speed machine, but if you don't put in gear one, the machine will error out on this process. So now the next thing it's asking for is which tool number. So we're using tool number seven, input. And now this is set up in a G-code fashion, but this is set up similar to an Excel file where everything is in columns and you don't actually type in G1 or G2 on the control panel. You use the soft keys. So what I'm gonna do, the first thing is push G0 Final point on X is going to be 1 inch 130 because I want to drill a 1 inch 130 hole because I'm using this probe as a boring bar. Final point on Z. So whenever we do the manual process, Z is the actual location of the part. 
the Z's up here are assumed minus, so we don't have to keep putting minus every time, but the Z's here, positive is on the right side of zero, negative is on the left side. So final point on Z, I'm gonna stay 100 thousandths away from the face of the part. So I'm gonna wrap it to this position, one inch 130, Z.100. Uh, circle radius, this is if we're doing a G2 or a G3 move, so we're not gonna need this. RPM, uh, S code. So this is why I program using the drill as a boring bar. So that way I can either call in a direct diameter, so I can type in 2000 surface, 2000 RPM with an S, or if I push this button over here where it says surface speed V for velocity, and then type in 2000, that'll calculate 2000 surface feet per minute based on the diameter of the tool. So if I'm drilling something difficult like Inconel and I want to run 180 surface feet per minute, I don't know exactly what that translates into RPM without cracking the calculator out. But if I just type in 180, then it will calculate the correct RPM that the drill is going to need at that radius. If you want to just punch in a straight diameter, turn this off, type in 2000 input, and it's going to turn on the spindle 2000 RPM. But if you notice, it doesn't actually say MO3 or MO4 on this screen. That's handled on the tool data screen with the arrow. So the forward arrow is MO3. So 2000 RPM, it's going to assume it's going in the ML3 direction because of looking at the tool data for tool seven. Uh, feed rate, we're on a G0, we don't need a feed rate. Uh, M code, we've already turned the coolant on at the beginning of the program, so we don't need that. And the offset number, this is important. We need to call up offset number one in order to pick up the wear offset for this tool. But only do it one time. Do not keep putting in offset one on each line because then it freaks out the controller. We've seen that in the past. So now the next thing I want to do is push the G1 button, move over to the Z column. So just like with regular G code, everything is modal. So if we go to the Z column, and type in a minus one, that'll drill a hole one inch deep. And now, because we have a G1, we need to put in a feed rate. So we can type in a feed rate inches per revolution, or if we push this button, it'll be feed rate per minute. With the insert drill, I'm going feed rate per revolution. So 0 0.005, five thousandths per rev, and then down arrow. And now the next thing I'm gonna do is go into rapid, so G0. Move over to the Z column, because I don't wanna move X around, and go back to point one. And that will rapid to one inch 130, 100 thousandths in front of the hole, feed in one inch deep at five thousandths per rev, and then it's going to wrap it out to 100 thousandths in front of the bore, and we're done with that process. And then we say shape end, and then end. So now, let's check the tool path. So if we go to here and go to figure check, because it's a manual process, it does not drill a hole in the part. So let's go ahead and run The program check, check continue. So now it's going to rough out the part. Because this was what we've already had in the beginning of the program. It's 
it's going to finish it, tool path erase, and now it's going to wrap it to this position, feed inward where it had a solid line, and then a dotted line back across it and up for the rapid move. And we're done with the program. So now let's run the part. So because this is an existing program, I've already got it called up. I've already got the work shift set, program 21. And we're on work number 21. But I don't need to run the turning process because that's already finished. So what I'm going to do is come down to single process and I'm going to program layout. So I'm going to run R3, which is the manual process to drill that hole. So trace, single process, rough three input, turn on the coolant, in, in auto, and then hit cycle start. All right, let's run the part. And there's our part with the hole in it. If you like what you see, go ahead and push the subscribe button and click the bell so you won't miss any future videos we have coming out. Thanks for watching.